Hi there, this is just a quick video just to introduce the UCD31XX family of digital controllers from uh, TI. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm not affiliated with TI in any way. Um, I just thought this was a really cool uh, product that uh, is, seems to be a best kept secret of TI. Back in 2008, Texas Instruments introduced the UCD9000 family of digital controllers. Now this was being targeted towards the low cost um, applications of uh, point of load uh, supplies. At that time, um, the most you could do with these devices was just program in the, the filter constants and uh, you know, fix set points. A few years later, after the release of the 9000 family, Texas Instruments released the 3000 family, which was more uh, configurable and had a little bit more flexibility in the programming of the device. The one drawback to this uh, new configuration was that the filter was a, a true digital filter, and you needed to have an understanding of how a digital filter worked. A few years later, after the release of the 3000, um, Texas Instruments released the 3100 uh, family which uh, implemented a standard PID filter which made it much easier for people that did not understand digital filters to actually create closed loop control. Of the UCD3100 family um, I believe that the 3138 uh, was the variant that actually had the PID uh, configuration of the filter. Subsequently, they introduced um, uh, a 3138, uh, I believe 064 part, which was uh, an extended memory part, and it had a few more peripherals like uh, SPY and uh, extra I squared C. So that's some background information on how Texas Instruments has been working with their integrated digital controllers. Um, as a additional bit of tidbit information, um, Texas Instruments has really two um, paths for digital control. One is the hardware implementation, uh, such as the UCD family, and the other is towards uh, a fully firmware-based uh, solution in their DSP uh, branch. So what makes this part cool? Um, my belief is that uh, it removes some of the uh, hard work of developing uh, closed loop control by making all the key building blocks available in hardware to be configured very easily. By implementing these blocks in hardware it reduces the timing that it takes to do each calculation and it allows you to close loops at a much higher rate. So that means that you're actually able to close loops at the PWM frequency. Since this device actually has so many different ways of configuring it, um, it's way too much to, to describe in one video. Um, I might actually go into uh, a few videos describing how to configure various blocks uh, since it's so poorly documented right now. And if there's one complaint I might have on how TI has uh, been supporting this product is that it's hardly supported at all. Um, documentation is scattered amongst many fragment documents. Um, the EVMs that you can purchase, uh, you actually have to request firmware from um, Texas Instruments to even use them. They're not readily available on the web. Um, just support in general uh, seems to be lacking and it's a shame because uh, the product appears to be a very good product. So let's talk about the uh, features of the UCD3138. If you actually take a look at the data sheet, you can see that there is three uh, front ends uh, available for this uh, device, and they refer to them as their error analog to digital converters, so the EADC blocks. Now these can be uh, configured um, with different uh, analog gains, which will give you up to a millivolt uh, per bit of resolution. Each of these EADC uh, error blocks has uh, a 14-bit DAC um, 
as a reference. And this DAC uh, can be set from various sources uh, within the UCD chip. Examples where some of the uh, DAC values may come from if programmed would be, for example, uh, a ramp for soft start or uh, another uh, blocks filter output or um, just a direct value uh, programmed in. Um, they have several selections of which can be used as the uh, reference um, value for the DAC. So in addition to the EADC block, um, they have a PID filter block and a PWM block. And there is three of the filter blocks and four of the PWM blocks available on UCD part. Any PWM block can be assigned to any PID block and any PID block can be assigned to any EADC block. So this makes for a lot of different combinations uh, in which you can implement on UCD. So other than a few things about how to glue the various uh, EADC, PID, and PWM blocks together to form a closed loop uh, control block, um, the part itself has some other features on it which make it uh, quite flexible for use. So some of these features are like an ARM7 core that's uh, available. Um, there's uh, a PM bus interface. Uh, there's several timers on board. There's uh, UARTs available. There's standard GPIO available. Um, there's uh, an analog to digital converter available. And uh, even though they do uh, say that there's a JTAG on board, um, TI as of today is not supporting that JTAG for external use. Um, they have mentioned that they are planning to release in the future. Uh, support for JTAG. When you move up to the UCD3138064, which is the uh, larger memory um, version of the uh, 3138, um, support for SPI and additional I2C is added in addition to all the rest of the peripherals that are there. So I think um, this probably finishes up this video for today. Um, I will be making a few more videos on how to configure various parts of the uh, peripheral blocks, uh, example the ADC and the PID and the uh, PWM blocks uh, for simple control uh, methods. Um, I have not uh, done any advanced control with this chip yet um, for PFCs or anything like that. Um, so there's some things I won't be able to comment on, but uh, I have used um, pretty extensively the um, uh, the filter and the PWM blocks in the front end for simpler control methods, and um, I've also used the uh, ADC and uh, UART and SPI on this device for the uh, UCD uh, 313064 uh, quite a bit as well. So you know. There's enough about the chip that I know um, that uh, I think will help others um, learn how to use it. Uh, since again, as I, I said earlier, the, the documentation and the examples um, are not well written and it makes it difficult for newcomers uh, who are just exploring the chip itself as a, an alternate to a fully analog solution. Um, it makes it very difficult for them to take that chip and understand how they could use it in their product or their uh, experimentation or whatever. If you are interested in learning more about it and experimenting with it, um, my suggestion would be not to purchase one of the EVM kits right away since they're relatively expensive, um, but to instead purchase the uh, control board portion only which is essentially just the UCD chip with a lot of uh, headers available to gain access to the pins. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning more about the uh, peripheral blocks themselves, uh, I will be doing some videos on configuring the front end and PID and PWM blocks for simple single loop uh, controls. Thanks again for watching.